Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to take a look at relations and implicitly defined functions. Now, there are many important curves in math that don't necessarily pass the vertical line test, so they don't represent functions. So, for example, if we had the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, that would be the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. It's definitely not a function because the graph is a circle, so it's not going to pass the horizontal line test. But circles are very important in math, and they have a lot of different properties that we can talk about, both geometrically and algebraically. The general term for any set of ordered pairs is a relation. And sometimes relations are functions, but other times relations don't necessarily have to be functions. So we're going to look at an example where we have a relation and we're going to test ordered pairs to see if they work in the relation or not. So we're going to look at the relation x squared times y plus y squared equals 5. And we're going to test out a few different ordered pairs to see if they're going to work. And the first ordered pair that we're going to look at is 2, negative 5. So that's an ordered pair, so we're just going to take our x value and our y value and we're going to plug it in here and we're hoping to get 5 as an answer at the end. So I'm going to take this 2 and I plug it in for my x, so I get 2 squared, but then I have to multiply that by my y value, so that's negative 5, and then I have to take my y value and square it and add it to that first answer, and we're hoping to get 5 as our answer. So 2 squared is 4, and 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And then on the end here, if we take negative 5 and square it, well, when you square something that's negative, it becomes positive, and 5 squared is 25. So we've got negative 20 plus 25, and if we take negative 20 plus 25, we do get 5. So we get 5 equals 5, and because we got a true statement, that confirms that this ordered pair is part of the relation. Now we're going to test another ordered pair. We're going to test 1, 3. So again, we're going to take our x and our y value and we're going to plug them in. So we're going to get 1 squared times 3 plus 3 squared, and we're checking to see if that's equal to 5. So 1 squared is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. And then if we square this 3, we get 9, so we get 3 plus 9, and we're checking to see if that's equal to 5. Well, 3 plus 9 is going to be 12, and we know that 12 is not equal to 5. So the ordered pair 1, 3 is not part of the relation. And now we're going to check one more ordered pair. We're going to check the ordered pair 2, 1. Again, we're going to take our x and y and plug them in. So we've got 2 squared times 1 plus 1 squared. And we're checking to see if that's equal to 5. Well, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 1 is still 4. 1 squared is 1. And we're checking to see if that stuff is equal to 5. Well, 4 plus 1 is 5. So since we got a true statement in here, that confirms that 2, 1 is in the relation. But now let's stop and think about this. Does our relation represent a function? And what we should notice from the ordered pairs is if we look at the ones that worked, we had the same exact x value being matched up with two different y values and that violates the rules of being a function. If we were to graph these out and do our vertical line test, we would have a vertical line passing through two separate points on our graph because these points have the same x value but different y values. So this one is definitely not a function. Now I want to go back to that equation that we were talking about earlier with that circle. So the x squared plus y squared equals 4 equation. And we know for sure that this is not a function itself, but we can actually rewrite this in a way so that it is made up of two separate functions. So what I want to do is I want to try to solve to get my y alone. So the first thing I would do is subtract that x squared over to the other side. So I would get y equals negative x squared plus 4. And then if I want to get rid of the squared on my y, I need to square root both sides. 
Now the left hand side it's just going to be y and on the right hand side when we square root this we need to remember to put our plus and our minus in front of our square root. Now we're not able to simplify down anything underneath the radical because of the addition that's happening between the negative x squared and the 4. And as we look at this, the plus and minus out in front of the radical is actually what makes this one not be a function. Because if I were to plug in a value for my x, I would get back two separate y value answers, one positive, one negative. But what we can actually do with this is we can take this plus and this minus, our radical, and we can split that up into two separate equations that would individually be functions. So I can split this up into being y equals the positive square root of negative x squared plus 4, and also y equals the negative square root of negative x squared plus 4. For this top one that I wrote out in green, that would represent the top half of our circle, but this one down here in orange, since it's the negative square root, would represent the bottom half of our circle, and each one of those individually would pass the vertical line test. So they are by themselves functions, and since all of the ordered pairs in either one of these functions would satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, then we can say that this relation given by our equation defines the two separate functions implicitly. So we're going to look at another relation and we are going to describe its graph using implicitly defined functions. So we're going to look at the relation x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 1. Now, the left-hand side looks really, really tricky to work with, but this is actually a nice factor set. We could factor this into x plus y and x plus y. And because it's a repeated factor, we can actually shorten this into being x plus y squared. Now the right hand side is still going to be 1 and our goal is going to be to solve this to get y alone. But right now y is trapped inside of the parentheses by the squared power. So I'm going to square root both sides and when I do that on the left hand side I'm just going to get x plus y but on the right hand side when I square root the 1 I have to remember that I get two answers there. I get a positive 1 and a negative 1. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to split this into two separate equations. One of them is going to be the x plus y equals positive 1, and the other one is going to be the x plus y equals negative 1. So if I go ahead and get this first one with y alone, I'm going to subtract that x over to the other side. So I'll get y equals negative x plus 1. And if I solve my other one to get y alone, I'm still going to subtract that x over to the other side, but now I'm going to get y equals negative x minus 1. And what I'm actually going to do with these is I'm going to type them into my calculator so that we can take a look at the graphs. So I've got each one of my equations typed in and I'm going to hit graph. And we get these two lines. And actually they're parallel lines. So the graph for our relation consists of two parallel lines and each one of those lines came from one of our implicitly defined functions. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.